Well, it's so good to have a spot like that close by that can uh, save a tough day or it can make a, you know, an afternoon when we've got a few hours to go fishing. It can, it can certainly make it easier than running all around looking for fish when you know you can just slide over there on the other side of that highway and, and there's the honey hole. That is a great yellow jack. Look at the color on that. I know, guy. he's so beautiful. There he is. Oh, you're on. That was a great fish, man. There he is. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Woohoo, that was awesome. Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought you said you had to. Got him, relax. Oh, dude, he just ripped my boat off. Oh. Awesome. Look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. Awesome afternoon to be able to slide out there and, uh, and have all that action just in a couple hours so close to home. Yeah, you told me that, would, that spot was happening and that is a spot that, that it's perfect, especially on like a south wind here because you can leave Hawks K Resort, idle right under that bridge and there you are, you're fishing. And literally you can fish there without ever having to get on a plane out of, uh, out of Hawks K. You can fish there in a kayak, you can fish there any, any way. I mean, it's so close. And uh, even though it is right by the road and all those cars are driving by, and it's kind of a community hole, but it comes and goes in, in how good the fishing is there. And you had said, man, let's go over there. It's really good. I think we can catch some tarpon. And then they were telling me about the yellow jacks. Awesome. That is a great yellow jack. We'll, we'll get them in the Marquesas real big on the back of rays, but yep. not so much like this. This is yeah. a good one. Yeah, they are been really nice. I mean, they're you a watch. little different, you know? He's got like 10 following it. They're a little different than the, than the other jacks, the Jack Cravel, the horse eye jack, a little more toothy. The yellow jack has got a mouth a little bit more like a permit. Hard oh, fighter, too. Beautiful fish. I wonder if they'd eat a fly. color on that guy. He's so beautiful. The yellow jack is a little bit more of a shy fish. They eat a lot of fish, but they don't have a lot of teeth in their mouth. They tend to be more shrimp eaters, honestly. But what we saw is they obviously like pilchards. And then they have this really cool coloration, like stripes on them and then blue and just a really pretty fish. But what I like about them is, is that they have been kind of a little more elusive. These seem to be pretty tuned into these pilchards. Nice. Got one too. You do? Yeah, keep a couple, we'll eat them for dinner, man. They're really good. You want it? Yeah. I keep this one. I got a Jack Craval. Looks like he's about perfect size for you. Oops. Now, do you catch them that size normally? Yeah. Yeah, so that's hey, a, the fishing hunk. That's a good size one for. Yeah, I love these markings on the, the top of them, these blue little deals like that. It's really been the year of the yellow jacks for some reason. I don't know why, um, but, but ever since uh, this, this past year, it's been yellow jacks everywhere. Um, they're on the reefs. Um, I mean, we're seeing them chasing value on the reefs. We're catching yellow jacks out there. Um, and pretty much every bridge and channel, um, you know, they're, they're not just, you know, it used to be you'd catch one occasionally. You know, we'd see one on the flats, you know, you'd see a school go by occasionally. But if you told me, hey, I want to go catch a yellow jack, I would have no idea. Um, you know, we've been um, seeing them on the reefs while we're spear fishing. Um, we've been, uh, you know, really everywhere from the bridges to the offshore, there's been yellow jacks. And the yellow jack's a pretty interesting fish. I'd caught so few of them that I'd never even tried eating them. You've told me in the past that they're mm -hmm. good eating, um, but since we started catching so many of them this year, I just took a few home, uh, filleted them up, and I mean, I'm looking at that meat. It's beautiful. It looked yeah. like it looked like mahi. It looked like dolphin. You know, it's got a bloodline in there. You got to make sure you take the bloodline out. But other than that, the meat is fantastic. There it was. Turned direction super fast. A bunch of snappers. Boy, look at that cloud of snappers. Yeah. It's a nice, hard fighting nice yellow jack. I mean, what a cool there fish, huh? There are so many snappers down there. Mm. <laughs> Is this good or what? Yeah. I mean, to have, I mean, right here, right next to the road, right in front of the Hawks Cay, and uh, 
to catch these great eating, great fighting, beautiful fish. That's a good one. Yeah, man. Very cool. And I, I, I've caught these before and just let them go. And you've told me they're good eating. I've heard it, but I've never caught them consistently enough to like really try it. But so I took a few home the other day, and man, I mean, honestly, it tastes so similar to dolphin that. I mean, fried some like a first one I ever had was smoked and it was outstanding. All right, I got something different. You Check got. this out. You want something else that tastes good? Grouper, how about that? Black grouper. Look at that. <laughs> uh, he's a little too small to keep, but nice. Oh, a little too small, but boy, he's tasty. <laughs> he lit up too, boy. And you know what? That, that bait was almost on the surface when he ate it. That's awesome. We got them going now. Cool. I wonder if that's what those groupers have been making that big boil. Could be. Amazing. All right, fella, I'm gonna let you go. So. Look, at, look at the jacks here. They're... The fishing honk again. <laughs> there he is. Oh, you're on. That was a great fish. There he is. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Woohoo, that was awesome. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort, the only key you'll need. Lorenz, America's number one fish finder. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Hook, Powerful, St. Croix Rods, Buff, and Vibe. You know, we started off, um, we had some pilchards that we caught earlier, um, so we had a well full of those. And then didn't have a lot of time. It was just a you know late afternoon. We're gonna slide out and go fishing somewhere. Again, I'm thinking we go here, go there, you know, or we could just. I mean, we're really looking at the spot right now. We're sitting at the Hawks Gate pool, looking at where all these fish are, and it's really just the rock jetties between these two little bridges. Um, you know, there's all these rocks down there, and that current just flows by, and, the, and all kinds of fish will stage up on those rocks. I've caught permit there, tarpon. Um, we've caught snook, snappers, grouper and jacks and uh, all that can be right here um, really the pilchers are the key we could catch some stuff on on shrimp and other things but having the pilchers really gets everything excited um, you know it's a spot I, I we had been catching some small tarp in there um, so that's one of the reasons we went but it, the yellow jacks had been so ferocious this year that literally that's what we said i said we were leaving the dock hey man i got this spot mm -hmm. where i think we're gonna catch a bunch of these yellow jacks I've never done that before. It's never been that consistent to where we went there looking for that species and then catching something else would be a byproduct. Swarmed that one. Oh, <laughs> look at him go. You got him? Yeah. Nice. Now this looks like... Small one. Yeah, a little small one. Wow. It's, all the jacks fight different. <laughs> Boy, to get these yellow jacks so fired up on the pilchards, yeah. that's, that cool? that's something because we... Where I'm seeing them, they're, they're definitely following Race. This one's going to be a good one for your dinner because he ate that pilchard all the way down. Man, as far as eating, and I eat a lot of fish, but catching them that day and cooking them that night, I don't know how well they freeze. I haven't tried that or anything, but these are right up on the top of my list now. Very similar to, to mahi as far as, you know, the firmness, mild taste, but really, really good. But yeah, we had great action. You know, they ended up looking behind the boat and we had a, 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 about a hundred mangrove snappers, you know, yeah. um, just, just all behind the boat, different sizes from real small undersized to some really nice ones. And sure enough, the, the bigger ones, you ended up catching them on the pilchards. You caught a nice big mangrove, um, great for eating that, that night. Um, then we uh, we also caught some Jack Cravals, you know, so much fun. Whoa, immediately. to come up here and eat. It's another good fish. Eat off the surface. Man. Golly. Fishing honk, man. <laughs> it is fishing honk day. Everybody wishing they were fishing. Wow. I'm going to try your spot. <laughs> Keep chumming a few, too. Get I'll tell you what, if you had a couple kids out here. Yeah. You mean like us? Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> I brought my boys out here the other day. I brought Reed, and he, Reed's all about the action. He, he was all like, I don't really want to go, Dad. I don't know. Thought it was going to be kind of boring, and, 
and we got into these yellow jacks, and he was just like, and I was, I couldn't tear him away. I was like, we gotta go. He's like, no, no, no. I'm like, I thought you didn't want to go. He's like, well, I didn't know it was gonna be this good. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want him to say. Another exactly nice what you guy. want him to say. Look at that snap, all those snap are under my filtered right there. There must be 2,000 of them. It's like a yellow tailing. Yeah. Except you're black tailing. So this is what I'm used to catching. You know, we catch these Jack Cravals a lot doing this, but, and they're, uh, you know, fun to catch, but certainly not the food value of the Yellow Jacks. I mean, I've never tried to eat a Jack Craval, but I've always heard they're not good. Um, the I've meat's heard definitely mixed reviews on them. Uh -huh. I've heard some people say they are good. Really? Other people say that they're not. But a little bit of everything in here. Yeah. While we're fishing those rocks, you know, there's such a variety of fish. We've got the snapper, we caught some of those. Um, you ended up catching a couple of nice little grouper there. Um, you know, the, the grouper into those rocks, uh, really a variety of stuff between the jacks, the, the yellow jacks, the grouper, the snapper. Um, but the one that I was really hoping we'd see was the tarpon. And I don't know if it's because the yellow jacks were so ferocious that the, that the tarpon weren't competing or what it was, but, but, but we didn't see one for a while. But as we waited out and, and, the, and the water was slicking off, it was just getting calmer as the day went on, the sun was getting a little lower. Um, finally, as we threw out a handful of bait, we saw a big bust and I knew that was a tarpon. There he is. Oh, you're on. It's gonna be a tarpon. That was a great fish. Man. There he is. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Woohoo, that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome, man. Let's see if he's got a brother. Yeah, throw a few chums while I got this one on. We'll get them frenzied up. That was awesome. Oh, look at him go. <laughs> Very cool. It's a pretty decent size one. That fish had one of the highest jumps that I've seen in, in a while. You know, they can do all different kinds of things. They can come out of the water and tumble and turn, twist, they can they can do back flips, they can do front flips, they can go side to side, they can do an air swim. But that one that you had just came straight up out of the water. I mean he went so high, it was incredible. That was a lot of fun. Especially on the light rod we had, you know, using those six to twelve pound St. Croix legend inshore rod. Just an awesome light action, small reel, three thousand Daiwa back bay, light, fun, and you know that was a pretty good sized fish for that 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 tackle. I love it, man. Late afternoon tarpon. Can't beat it. This guy's gonna come up and jump again right here. Here he comes. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at him go. Awesome, huh? Yellow jacks, grouper, snapper, yeah, and then. All in the same little spot. Finish off with a nice tarpon. That's pretty nice, huh? All within sight of. The resort, not that. He's gonna, he might jump again right here. Man, this rod is just perfect for this size fish. It's that 4,000 reel. It is, yeah! All right. Are you ready for him, Tom? I'm very ready, and I'm glad that you have him plenty worn out. <laughs> I like them when they're a little bit worn out. Although, I knew he was gonna do that. Right at the boat, they always have that extra kick right when you put your hands in their mouth. Talk about dinner and a show. We got some yellow jacks for dinner. Oh, shoot. All kinds of action, snappers. I really had a good grip on him, and he pulled right out. An incredible show, watching that tarpon jump all over the place. That's right, they put on a good show right in the afternoon like that. Just a beautiful fish. Man, the eating machine. You look down in his mouth, just those gill rakers and the throat. It is just made for eating those pilchards. And that's our 
probably the average fall size tarp. I see a lot of them just like that. Big enough to chase these mullet around when the mullet run through. But I love, love the pilchards for them. It's an eating machine. Definitely one of my favorites. Especially when that's what we're catching. <laughs> All right. It's out. He's getting ready to go. Come back home. Everybody. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, man. All, all he needed was a little, little second to get his breath. So one of the key elements to giving your uh, passengers a soft, dry, comfortable ride on the water is trimming the boat efficiently. When we start off jumping up, we had to have the motor trimmed all the way down. That's going to help us get up on plane quickly, but then as soon as we get on plane, start getting to going about 20, 30 miles an hour, we want to start trimming that motor up, and, uh, and there's a sweet spot in there. When you, when you get it just right, uh, you know, it's, it, the hull comes out of the water, boat's going faster, just running real efficient, great on fuel, um, and if we trim it down, it can really uh, take our fuel economy from maybe 10 gallons an hour all the way up to 15, so it's a really big um, key on fuel savings and trimming the boat really helps to um, provide a softer, drier ride for your customers. Mercury came out with an incredible feature, it's called After Trim. This does the same thing that I'm doing, but it does it automatically without having to think about it. Um, so once you turn that Active Trim on, the motor automatically trims down when you get ready to jump up on plane. It's already trimmed down to that optimal position to get up quickly and efficiently. And then once you get on plane, it automatically trims the boat up to the optimal angle for fuel efficiency and, and soft dry rod. And if you want to turn it off, if you want to go manual, all you got to do is press your button and it's automatically off and you're back to manual. So uh, really safe, really efficient. Instead of having to worry about trimming all the time, it's doing it for you. So this can help save fuel on these long rods and it can make for a comfortable, more pleasant day on the water. Check out that Mercury Active Trim. It's an incredible product. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Motor Guide and by Daiwa, Ameritrail, Nikon, B&W Trailer Hitches, and Florida Marine Tracks. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. You know, we'd like to get to know you better, carry on the conversation, and the best way to do that is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. based right in the heart of the Florida Keys, Marathon Key to be exact, right around mile marker 53. Being a fully interactive aquarium, we give you a different perspective on, on your typical aquarium. We have touch tanks with all different types of stingrays, six different types actually, that you would find locally here in the Keys that not only you can interact with by petting or feeding, we can even get you suited up and right in the water with our animals. We also have different encounters if you want to meet a shark today. You can either meet a nurse shark by petting and feeding, being a really important part of our training, or we can get you into our large 200,000 gallon tank to not only be up close and personal with the sharks, but also get to feed them as well. Now, if sharks and rays aren't your thing, we've got lots of different species of fish that you would find local here in the Keys, including beautiful rainbow parrotfish to the massive goliath groupers. Surrounding our entire property is our natural lagoon system. The whole system is a natural flowing system, so we've got the Baca Cut right here in our backyard. That's actually where you're going to find the Florida Bay and the Atlantic Ocean meeting. Now the water naturally circulates through our property, but all of the species that we have in there are, again, a really amazing distribution of what you would naturally find in the Keys. The aquarium is not where our work stops. We are constantly out in our, our local environment, out in our community with the people. We do all sorts of outreaches from all the way up in Key Largo to down in Key West, always furthering our education for people to really know about the different species that we have here in the Keys. Currently our aquarium is a for-profit, but what we have been working on is opening up our very brand new nonprofit part. Now it's called Reach. 
With our new nonprofit, we're actually then going to be able to do a lot more research. So we're going to be able to give back to our community even more so uh, by putting a lot of extra energy into, into our community and into our rescue and rehab. There he is. There he is. That was cool. We see him chasing yeah. around. Yeah, they've been schooling up and frenzying together even. You got one too? Double header. I got a Jack Carrell though. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't know. It's a good fish. Yeah, I got a Carvall. Oh, I got a Barracuda. Do you really? Yeah. Multi-species day. Well, it's so good to have a spot like that close by that can uh, save a tough day or it can make a you know an afternoon when we've got a few hours to go fishing it can it can certainly make it e a lot easier than running all around looking for fish when you know you can just slide over there on the other side of that highway and there's the honey hole literally sitting right here at the pool within eyesight certainly within a quarter of a mile from our seat think of all the fish we've caught like right there bonefish permit tarpon, like incredible fly fishing for tarpon, as good as it gets anywhere in the world, right there. Bone fishing, as good as it gets. Right there, we're catching the jacks, the snappers, the tarpon, I mean, all around us, just incredible yeah. fishing for so many different species. Sharks, um, you know, just amazing. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, man. All he needed was a little Awesome. <laughs> little second to Very get his cool. grip. And he was off. Good spot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's huh? awesome, man. Yeah. This is what it takes right here, is one, one afternoon like this, next thing you know you're living in the Keys.